guest star with us. Would you like to introduce yourself? Uh, hello, I am William, a mentally unstable artist. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we all? <laughs> and uh, William is a friend of Brian's, they work together. Yeah. And uh, he's on this very special episode of Can You Not? Very special because we're making it slightly shorter just because uh, I, uh, we have a big premiere event coming up today. Yeah. I mean, by the time you hear this, it will be done and over. But uh, as of right now, it's been a lot of hustle and bustle on my end. So, but it's going to be fun. I think it's going to be a good time. I think but, it'll uh, be a good one. But in the interest Hopefully. of that, we're doing seven minutes for our topics today instead of ten. And the theme for today is memory and uh, memories, if you will. <laughs> The other day, Shelby and I were talking about a lot of the the things related to the election, and we oh got boy. <laughs> we were wrong about that. <laughs> <laughs> right, we were very wrong, but Terrible we got on the topic were. of the idea of white guilt. Mm. So, um, to me, uh, it was kind of interesting to t- to think about the fact that uh, there is a race of people that were guilty or that are supposed to feel some sort of guilt over something that they don't have any memory of actually doing. And then there are the people that talk about, oh, yeah, well, if I was alive back then or if I was my grandparents, then I wouldn't do those things to this other race of people or to people in general. Mm -hmm. But we don't actually know what we would do. Mm-hmm. Right. And the whole idea behind guilt is to feel remorse or feel bad about something that you did and you have a memory of doing. So I I just thought it was interesting. We could talk about the idea of people feeling guilty about things they didn't do, you know? Yeah. Um, I would say to that, I think the concept of being sorry about what our ancestors did is not so much saying like... Uh, wow, I'm just as terrible as them. I think it's more about saying, yeah, people that we represent in a way did something horrible, and we need to own that, and I think be able to say, but we can change things. You know, Mm -hmm. we don't have to fall in line with that thinking. We can, we can, again, I don't think it should be just something we dust under the carpet and say, like, well, I didn't do that, because, like you said, well, at right. the same time, we don't know. You don't know. Right. Like, if you lived, just, like, there might be social issues today that we hop on the bandwagon and that, like, 200 years from now, they'll look back and be like, how could they possibly support that, you know? Right. It's all what you were growing up learning what was good and what yeah. wasn't. Mm-hmm. But I think a big thing on it, a lot of it's with white guilt. It's literally they want you to feel guilty. Mm-hmm. And I don't think you should feel guilty for anything you haven't done yourself. It's fine to like look at it and go, okay, that's that's real bad, and we don't want to continue doing that, and we want to learn about it, so we don't repeat it, and we don't teach it, and we can educate it out of people. Mm-hmm. But I I despise it when people go, you need to feel guilty for this, mm-hmm. right. for who you are, or who your ancestors were. Like I wouldn't apologize if my dad was a serial murderer, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't apologize if my ancestors were slave owners. I can feel bad that that would have happened but I, I would never do that and I didn't do anything to feel guilty about right and that's kind of like at least for me as a black person I wouldn't want my white friends to feel bad about something that they did not do to me it's not you guys fault that uh, my race of people is where they are it's systematic racism's fault I wouldn't blame a particular person or particular I mean it's it wasn't one person that let racism happen, you know? <laughs> a group of people... In I'm power. Not, right. I mean, a group of people did one thing to another person. It was fixed somewhat. And now it's much more important that we all recognize that it happened, that, like you said, and then try to move on from it and help each other build from it than it is to feel bad about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Guilt and pride are very interesting things because you could, you could talk about you know like what does white pride mean too? Because mm-hmm. you see like mm-hmm. people are saying like why should I be ashamed to be white? Like why can't I be ex- like white pride? But it's like, but you have to understand like what people like that don't understand is that by saying, it it's not that, it's not the saying that you should be ashamed of who you 
are without having any sort of uh, control over it. It's saying that you have to understand that there are people who haven't had the same opportunities as you historically Mm -hmm. and being able to recognize that they're the ones that need the publicity and the and the help and the and the companionship to be proud of their identity too i mean it's not a radical thing to say like i'm proud of being white because you you white people are benefit from being white all the time like they get to exercise that privilege constantly so you know but like say black pride you know Mm -hmm. or like asian pride or something like that that's something that we don't typically within a day-to-day basis at least in america at least in Mm -hmm. america celebrate nearly as much and therefore i i I think again you should be ashamed of who you are but you should also be willing to recognize that lauding yourself as in in the majority of people when you're already celebrated is can can be very like hurtful i guess Mm -hmm. yeah i'm i'm not particularly on the wagon of pride in Mm -hmm ethnicity or like background I personally on a personal level don't think that that requires pride or Mm -hmm. deserves pride it's fine if it's like a culture thing like if you come from a culture that like has certain traditions and you're prideful of that but if it's not a culture if it's just your ethnicity or your race I don't think it really requires pride but I agree with you because it's like when people you get the white people who go why don't we have a white history month yeah yeah. it's like (laughs) we kind of dominated western history for a while it's it's probably fine if we don't focus on it but then again (laughs) I don't really think it's necessary to have a Black History Month. You can focus on it and teach it more and stop, like, um, like with women in art, like, it, they're kind of... I don't know how to describe it. They're, they're, just, they're not talked about as much. They're kind of just erased from it because it's typically a man <laughs> until thing. Until it's supposed to be brought up. Yeah, until it's like, okay, now we got to talk about women. Yeah, it's right. just like in my art, art history class, my teacher is a traditional feminist, but even she, like, when she's talking about art history, it's she's talking about the typical art history, and then we get to the 60s and the 70s, it's like, all right, now it's time for feminist art. Mm-hmm. It's like, can't we just talk about it as a <laughs> Women whole? were doing art long before long there was feminist art. That's, right. It just that's was a, seen as decoration and not right. art. That was part of the issue with, at least for me personally, when uh, Stacey Dash, I think it was, said there should be no Black History Month. Yeah. She left out the part where you're supposed to say there should be no Black History Month because Black history should be a Everywhere. part of our Every everyday day. lives. Yes. Yeah. Black history is history. Right. Like when you talk about the world, you got to talk about everyone. Yeah. Not just the people who dominated it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I guess it's just a balance between respecting your past and not repeating it. Yeah, not repeating it, but respecting respecting your identity, respecting your past, but being willing to, uh, like I said, share and be able to uh, lift up the voices of others who may not have been mm-hmm. heard. I think that's, I think it's a good, good conversation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> With regards to memories, I think our court system is very flawed. <laughs> <It's> similar <laughs> to mine, <laughs> <laughs> because. By nature, our memories are constantly changing. They've, mm-hmm. they've shown that every time we remember a memory, it, it slightly changes because it, it, I think some people imagine that a memory is like something you put in a file and you put it away in a, in a bin and it just remains the same when you open it up again. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's not the same thing. It's almost, like, it's almost like having to reconstruct a puzzle that you don't have all the pieces to. You're never mm-hmm. going to remember exactly and every time you remember it, it degrades. And so... I wonder, like, should we eliminate uh, witness testimony, witness testimony from mm-hmm. court? Because you know we have things like DNA evidence, which is still fallible, but is still like a, a legit lot better. Thing. <laughs> we have, you know, like uh, security cameras. We have, um, you know, like recordings and stuff like that. It's we have a lot more tools to to fight. What, what someone might be lying about in court mm-hmm. or something like that. So I guess I wonder, like, what do you guys think? Do you think it's? Do you think we should eliminate it or what? I don't think you can eliminate it because there's not necessary. Because when cer- certain cases, you don't always have the best evidence, like physical evidence, demanding it. So you have to have like this person saw them at this time. They could be lying, but in most cases, I'd say it's a good to reason- reasonably assume they're not. Mm-hmm. In most mm-hmm. cases. That kind of goes into what I was 
That shit is exactly what I was going to talk oh. about. But <laughs> um, on you. one thing I found was, uh, this has to do with a repressed memory too, which is also a controversy. This woman, Eileen Franklin, apparently had a sudden recall of her father raping and murdering her friend as oh. a child wow. and threatening to kill her if she told anybody. And apparently she like repressed it because it's really traumatic. Just remembered it all of a sudden, took it to court, and that alone got him arrested. Man. So that's, it's crazy, it's, when you have eyewitness testimony and normal evidence, it's okay. But if you just have eyewitness testimony, but it's, it's something this crazy, I'm not sure if I'm for that. Like, if just eyewitness testimony mm-hmm. can actually put somebody in jail. Mm. Yeah, I think uh, that the testimony or the eyewitness testimony is, is a good thing. It plays a huge role in how we uh, paint the picture of what happened, but I think we should lean less heavily on it. I think you take that as your kind of your your base for what you start to investigate, mm-hmm. and then you go based off the physical evidence and the security camera footage, and now you have a clearer picture of what happened. Right. But uh, it's it's kind of like when people falsely accuse someone of rape. Mm-hmm. How do you how do you deny that person? Because if there's no real physical evidence, no clear physical evidence, then <laughs> the rapist could win, the victim could, or the, you know what I mean, someone who's lying could could get away with it. You yeah, know? and that was actually the rebuttal I was going to point out to my own question, was like instances of like sexual assault and stuff like that. Because that is like one where it's like, sometimes this stuff happens like, a year ago and you don't have the physical evidence 20 you, years ago. 20 years ago yeah i mean look at bill cosby you know like mm-hmm. and how that went down even with this donald trump stuff that's popped up lately mm-hmm. right right so it's a weird thing because it feels like in an instance like that we almost need the testimony of people but then it gets hard when you're talking about other crimes i guess that's a really difficult thing i'm i don't know because it's like it's hard to tell them, no, you don't have any evidence. But a part of me wants to be like, you don't have any evidence. Yeah. I don't want to put this person in jail because you said something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Innocent until proven guilty is how, right. the law, is how the law works. So it's, it's... It's just difficult to get around. And it's... It's like, in a, in a way, you could probably kind of, like, shape it so that you, you get their testimony and then you kind of figure out when it happened, what happened, all that stuff before they have ev- any reason to like change their story if they mm-hmm. were lying for some reason. But in a way, that, that still isn't very solid because if they just go, oh, he raped me, and I don't remember exactly when it was traumatic, you can't really do that. Right. Yeah. You can't yeah. take it at, at a, a logical, reason-stepped pace. Right. And then it's, it's weird because then there are studies where like you'll be sitting in we'll be sitting in this room together and Joe has on a green shirt and then tomorrow you, you <laughs> give that personal you information ask, away <laughs> you ask me uh, what color was Joe's shirt purple and I'll go oh yeah Joe did have a right. purple shirt right. on right. you know exactly. what I mean yeah there's so, all kinds of little things their memory does to try to go along like that um, that's why I think like it's important that we try to implement these like cameras and stuff like that with like police because like it's shown time and time again that like Police complaints go down, citizen complaints go down, because when you mm-hmm. have like actual mm-hmm. video footage, like it makes it better. There was a episode that I saw of, of Black Mirror, where um, these people had everyone has like these implants in their eyes that records things at all time. And mm-hmm. It was a very creepy concept, but it made you wonder, like, what would the future of crime be if mm-hmm. you were constantly recording everything and everyone could just play it back? From, you know your terrifying. angle your angle it'd be terrifying but like would the law be better maybe maybe yeah. it's like well, it's kind but of, like security or you know they say uh, privacy. Uh, no, privacy you increase the mouse yeah. trap <laughs> the smarter the mouse gets the harder the trap yeah know? yeah it's a it's a crazy idea but i think even though we might not have that in our immediate future the idea of having those eye implants i think it's, it kind of says something about where society and technology is going because, you know, we do have more and more cameras everywhere, you, you know. Mm-hmm. And, like, on one hand, it's like, yeah, like, maybe we do have more evidence. Maybe we can prove more things. But like you said, at what cost does it come to our own personal privacy? Right. What cost does it come to just, um, yeah, just those basic rights right. that we have? 
So, do you think national security is a re- good reason to do that? Like a legitimate? Now, I'm not saying that I personally believe that, but like, mm. do you think national security is good enough of a reason to monitor everything? I think that's tricky. I think I think it depends on the situation. I think when you start like. I think like what the NSA was doing with their yeah that was crazy pulling into people's uh, cell phones and computers and stuff. All I you had like to do over. is be. I think it was like four steps away from someone that is considered a threat, and you're you're the they can track your Facebook, they can listen to your phone calls, every text message. Yeah, they get every Snapchat. You know. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Get every Snapchat. Every, <laughs> every snap. Oh no! Now I'm really worried. <laughs> The scary part is just the fact that the companies themselves were building in these backdoors for them, like the FBI being and whatnot. cooperative with it, yeah. 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 That's why I admire Apple for being like, no, we're not going to do that for you. Can we have a choice in that matter? <laughs> I'd like to take one second to thank our sponsor for this week. It's Warby Parker. Have you ever heard of them? Ever heard of Warby Parker? I have. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do you have Warby Parker glasses? I, I see you don't. have glasses. Would you ever consider Warby Parker? Probably, because these are expensive. <laughs> <laughs> well, Warby Parker is actually pretty relatively cheap. And what you can do and what we're offering to our listeners is if you go to warbyparkertrial.com slash can you not, you can try on five different frames, five different glasses frames, uh, test them out for five days, and then you, like, get to send them back and it's all free the whole entire system you have to pay for the glasses of course but do you really want to like go out somewhere and like try on a bunch of glasses and then drive back no this is completely free if you go and try this out and they'll ship them straight to you and you can show all your friends and say hey do you like this one mom do you like this one (laughs) and then then you're insecure uh personality who asks your mom about every single uh fashion decision you make can can uh, can help you figure out what glasses you want. So if you are interested, like I said, that's Warby W A R B Y Parker Trial dot com slash Can You Not. If you would like to try your five free frames today, it's very simple, very easy. <laughs> All right, William, I know I stole your topic, but where do you want to go from here? <laughs> oh boy. I'm not sure. That was really all I had. <laughs> <laughs> We've had that happen a couple times. We never had that happen to a guest. So right. uh, you set a new record for us. And since it was kind of just like a, hey, you want to be on this? <laughs> yeah, it was very last yeah. minute, mind you, yeah. already. So Last night after work, I was like, what can I do? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you wanted to continue, did you have any further thoughts on what we were already talking about, perhaps? What, what would you say <laughs> would be the line drawn too far for personal mm-hmm. privacy and safety? See, I've always, throughout my life, it's just been, like, waves of different views on that. Because my dad is more conservative than I am, and he's more un- under the mindset that ev- he's fine with everything being watched. He's the kind of person who's like, if you didn't commit a crime, you're fine. You don't have anything to worry about. Right. right. But there's, it's, it's not just the, if you didn't commit a crime, it's, do you really want to be watched at every single moment? Yeah. And I guess it's, I'm more okay with, like, if there were, like, cameras out in public everywhere. That's not necessarily a bad thing. In public, you're not going to be doing the weird shit you're doing at home. Right. <laughs> what stuff? What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> but when it gets to the point where it's, like, 1984, telescreens in your house, no, obviously not. I don't think anybody would truly want that. Yeah, I don't think it's the... The people that are worried about finding out what you're doing illegal, like, those people are going to get caught anyway, most likely. Mm -hmm. But it's the stuff that you're not doing that's illegal that, like you said, the weird shit you're doing at home. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, just do you really want want everybody to know, or not even everybody, do you want there to be one person out there that knows everything that you do when you're talking on the phone, Mm -hmm. when you're texting when you're whatever everything you post on the internet everything you search (laughs) everything you search do you really want there to be one or two people out there that or a group of people who are in charge of tracking your every move even if you're not doing anything wrong right you know i might suggest to our listeners this is not a paid thing this is just a suggestion 
Uh, there's an app you can download, at least for the Mac, called Oversight. And what it will do is it will let you know if, uh, if an outside source is using your camera or built-in microphone. Mm, that's scary. Mm. So, because I know some yeah. people will do the thing where they kind of like tape over the camera or something like this, yeah. but this is a way of kind of doing that without, um, you know, like having a tacky little piece of paper on your, <laughs> on your laptop. <laughs> so. Yeah. I like, recommend it. It's free. So and it's like I have the that Norton's security thing, and that mm -hmm. thing it monitors everything you do online. Mm -hmm. Which I'm like, if I don't get a virus, watch me, watch me. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care at all. I just don't want a virus. Right. right. And it even comes down to like how much are how much do we allow companies to do stuff? Because we do give up a certain amount of our privacy in order to, you know, give out. Uh, like say when I apply for financial aid for school. I have to put in like my social security number and stuff like that. And you can say like, wow, that's really scary to be putting that up to, you know, online somewhere. But at the same time, you kind of, there's like a point where you kind of just have to have faith, I guess, that the government isn't going to like leak it out or right. like something. But you're taking a risk. You're taking a risk every time you or do something Or your school. Like yeah. Think about how often the these stores like Target get hacked. Mm-hmm. And you just put your social security number in so you could get the Target credit card, you know? Yeah. Do you have to do that? <laughs> is that really? Social, your yeah, social think, number? Yeah, for people that want those uh, cause Is those it technically like cards. a credit card? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I guess that makes sense then. Hmm. Yeah. So instead of bonus board points, you get no home. And <laughs> right. No, <laughs> no identity. <laughs> no identity. That seems like You a get a fresh start. You're looking at it wrong, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you gotta you, be optimistic. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you just became a target. <laughs> oh my god, Joe. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think this is an issue that's going to go away. I think it's only ob obviously going to be a, a thing we have to think about even more so. Yeah, it's like te technology ahead. progresses too. Right. And it's. Um, and it's interesting because I think people always assume this kind of stuff would come from, you know, people forcibly taking this information from you, but in a way, we give it away ourselves, you know, mm -hmm. we, we are responsible in a way. If we want to be a member of the 21st century, you kind of willingly do it in a sense. But then you know? again, you willingly do it, but you don't really have a choice in the matter of being a part of the 21st century yeah. person. I mean, you could, but you're missing out. You could miss out on a lot of but that's, important things like going to school and it's, like it's getting It's kind of like saying you have somebody who controls the food in your area, like if you're just in a small town like in Africa or something, and they're like, you can eat my really nice food over here and drink water and be healthy, but you have to pay me a lot of money for it. Or, since you're a human, I'll give you food for free, but it's this garbage that's in the ditches and full of shit. Yeah, aka uh, Taco Bell. No, I'm just yeah. <laughs> I only joke. I eat Taco Bell all the time with my girlfriend, so. But it's like you're making the decision, and you could survive off the bad stuff, but really, is that your decision? Yeah, yeah, it's a weird stranglehold of sorts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Brian, about Taco Bell? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love Taco Bell. <laughs> I also it, I love it. <laughs> right. Um, I think, I mean, there are people that live without interacting with society in that way. Obvish people True. live every day without getting on the internet. They probably don't get their identity stolen. Too right. They don't, <laughs> I'm sure. But um, unless someone like you know pretends to be them with a fake beard, right? It's like, no, I'm the real Hamish, and like. <laughs> Become a, a battle of the identities. But at the same time, you do see like the what's don't isn't there like a yearly holiday where they send out the youth and they can decide whether they not come Rose back. Springer? Yes. The yeah. purge. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> but you know, and you see people that uh, don't go back to their communities or you know. That's maybe. true. That's true. They, they actively make the choice for themselves. And yeah. there might be more danger out in the world that they're about to go into, but if they want there's that more freedom... There's more possibilities. All right. Wow. That's, uh, that's the end of that seven minutes. Man, that, that was an adrenaline rush. That felt really intense doing seven-minute topics. <laughs> <Right. laughs> Constant stress of being rushed. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you would like to... 
Oh. If you would like to check out more episodes that are slightly longer than this one, you go to soundcloud.com slash podcast. We're on iTunes. Give us a re- little review and we'll, we'll read it on the air. We haven't gotten one in a long time, so you could be the, the special person who gets the review read. Um, we're also on a lot of podcast apps. You can find us on Facebook, on Twitter, and uh, if you want to email us any feedback, suggestions, ideas for themes, you Go to canyounotpodcast at gmail.com. But uh, William, we really appreciated having you on the show. Hope you. William, come back. aka Will the Thrill. Will, Will the Thrill. thrill. Oh, man. Yep. And, and was he ever a thrill today? Ooh, ooh. <laughs> I don't know about that. Like a seven minute episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, well, we always end each episode by just saying, can you not? Can you not? Can you not? I also. We're screwed, America. Thanks for, <laughs> Thanks for that. Are you not America? I know we didn't talk about that at all, especially because we talked about that last episode, but oh boy. Oh Maybe boy. next time. It's been a stressful, stressful, stressful week. So Get out and protest. Do it. Yeah. going to try to keep moving. Bernie 2020. <laughs> Michelle Obama 2020. Joe Kowalski 2020. Maybe I will run. <laughs>